Hey there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to work with a kind of new product. Well, it's not really new. I've never used it before, so maybe you haven't either. And it's called Compressed powdered charcoal. Um, I was wandering around the art supply store a few days ago just looking for something new to try and I saw these little pots of um, powder and I was thinking that it was probably graphite powder but as I read the little package which really didn't have any, any directions on them it said it was compressed charcoal powder. So if you've ever worked with those squared sticks of black charcoal, you know how like intense that color is. Well, this is like shavings of that basically. And it came with a couple little tiny, um, felted paper blending stumps, which is what I'm using right here. And it's very spillable. As you can see that I have capped up my compressed charcoal powder and I'm working from the piles of spilled charcoal powder that I've already <laughs> that I've already dumped out on my table. I have to be completely honest with this project here. Um, I I was going right along, I was recording, and it turns out my, um, my camera was not recording anything, so I had to start over again. Then I spilled my charcoal powder everywhere, and then this is the third time I've started this. So, um, so as you can see, I've kind of mapped everything off. Um, I'm drawing with this little paper blending stump, just like I would a piece of charcoal stick or a pencil. This is way messier than the sticks or the willow charcoal. So I just want to warn you there, um, if you're somebody that gets stressed out with your art, if it's really messy, this is probably not the, um, the media for you. It also spends a good portion of your project time in the hot mess phase, which is that time where nothing is working and everything is messier and messier. And the more you do, the worse it looks. It's like when you're like cleaning out a room and you're going to like really clean it out and declutter and rearrange furniture and it, and it gets really, really bad. And it seems like you, it's never going to get better. That's, that's what happens here with a pressed charcoal. Um, I do have a, I will in a few days, have a real-time version of this in Critique Club for anybody that uh, wants it, that is a member. You can check that out in a couple days. Um, but at this point, I'm actually like, okay, yeah, we've got some hope here. This is this is working good. But when you're in that, in that frame of mind, um, sometimes it's best to take a break because if you are getting frustrated with how messy everything's looking, it can be really hard to pull yourself out of that funk, but you just got to trust that it will get better and just keep pushing forward because a lot of times your sketch is accurate. It's just, it's just messy and it's much better to have an accurate messy drawing than it is to have a pretty, um, refined looking inaccurate drawing because that's going to give you problems later on down the road. You might want to take that, that drawing, that sketch and transfer it onto watercolor paper or something else, a canvas to do a painting of. And if your, if your drawing isn't accurate, it doesn't matter how well shaded it is or how pretty it looks, uh, you, those problems will become apparent as you try to finish the piece. So, um, so just don't, don't fight the mess, just embrace it and you'll get through it. Um, I, I also realized that I had the head a little too round and um, I, so I added some more hair up top that also improved my proportions a little bit and gave her the, the more slender face that she had. Um, so in, in a kind of challenge that I had here uh, and the reason I wanted to sketch this portrait and I'll put a link below with the reference photo I used from Unsplash is that this woman um, was Asian and I don't often do portraits of people that are Asian and there are some differences in like the um, like the shape of the features like the the nose for instance where our Eastern um, or Western rather or African descended noses are much more pronounced um, and the Asian noses are much uh, their bridges bridges are not as pronounced and they're just more demure and it can be very difficult to paint something that's demure when like and have it also have the shading on it that it needs to stand out. So I found that to be challenging, but a good challenge. And that's the reason why I chose this reference photo. Um, I was a little um, unhappy with just how messy it was and how everything was black or white, or, you know, there were shades of gray, but I wasn't happy with that. So I grabbed um, some of these pastels. These are Jane Davenport's uh, I think called palette pastels. They are kind of like pan pastels or eyeshadows and you apply them and I'm using a pan pastel applicator for them and they're working really well. I really need to do a comparison between those and pan pastels because I like how I could fit a lot more on my table and with the pan pastels, I always feel like I'm out of room whenever I'm trying to work. I'm using the Conte crayons. I didn't want to have a full range of colors. I wanted to keep this almost monochrome. So I have my basic sketching set of Conte crayons. I'm having some trouble though. I'm working on on a tone tan sketch pad and the paper's a little on the smooth side and the um, the Conte crayons which have a little bit of a waxy binder in them 
are having a hard time sticking on top of the compressed charcoal. So I am kind of struggling with that a little bit, but I am, I'll, I do have enough of the paper plain, so I'm able to get a little bit of a bite on the, on the pastels, but you might notice that as you're layering up on top of the compressed charcoal that other hard mediums like a Conte crayon is having a hard time to stick. Uh, pastels that are a little bit softer will probably stick on top of that just fine. Um, so just kind of keep that in mind while you're laying down that compressed charcoal. If you decide that you want to try it after this, I'm probably not a good salesperson for compressed charcoal right now. I don't know if anyone's going to want to try it after seeing this mess, but um, but it was, it was fun. And it was funny because I, I'm working on a big sheet of newsprint and when I first got the, the pastel dust, or sort of pastel dust, <laughs> compressed charcoal home, I was doodling on the newsprint and it was great. I'm like, this is wonderful. It's so easy to use, so intuitive. I love it. And then when I got it with good paper, it was a hot mess. So, um, so practice it on like newsprint. It's a lot of fun just to kind of do some sketching on some newsprint. I don't know if I like it for final artworks, but, um, but it was fun. I have to give it that. And here I'm just using a white pastel. This is, um, a Mungo, Mungio Gallery one. I, I tried one of those buy it, try it. at Jerry's Artorama. You could buy like a couple white ones for like two bucks or something. And um, I'm liking that. They're sticking on top and giving me those highlights. Although I feel like the highlights are a little too gray and I would rather them be warmer. However, I think it's because the compressed charcoal is black. So when it mixes with a white pastel, you just get a gray. And that compressed charcoal comes up through everything. It mixes in with whatever you're putting on it for pastel or Conte. It's super strong and powerful and dominant. So keep that in mind as you're working. And as I'm getting at the end, I feel like I'm almost tinting a photograph. Uh, like if you had an old black and white photograph and you're using like those oils for photographs or those markers or peerless watercolors or whatever that's what it's feeling like with the palette pastels I really am enjoying this uh, this technique and it's fun. It was fun. I wasn't very thrilled with it whenever, right when I was done and I looked at it but now that I'm looking back at the footage in time lapse I'm thinking you know what it's not as bad <laughs> as it seemed and sometimes that's how it feels that like oh what a mess and people are gonna see this and they're not gonna... but with my sketchbook Sundays I just I I just want to grow. I don't I won't don't want to take an easy way out. I want to push myself to try something that's difficult and uh, see how I get on with it. And I hope you try that too in your sketchbook because that'll keep you from getting burnt out and keep you interested in art. If you want to see this in real time, check out Critique Club. I will link to that below. It's five dollars a month and you get to upload your paintings for Critique to a month and uh, it'll help you grow as an artist as well. Thanks so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please give me a thumbs up before you go and until next time, happy crafting.